Here are some examples on how to turn a, a science course into a full-on STEM course using robotics. Now, if you can get access to the LEGO Mindstorms Education EV Kits, uh, this is what a EV3 kit looks like. And you can see here it's about $412 for every two kids, and, and you can stretch that for three kids. I've used it with teams of two and three, and they work well uh, for both. Uh, and if you can only get one or two because of the price, having it as a center where kids rotate through it could work too. But take that with this STEM Robotics 101 uh, course that's completely free. And choose the one for the EV3. And you can see here, these are all the units that are already created for teachers to pick and choose from. So depending on the course you're teaching and how much you want to go into actual robotics and circuits and hardware or software and firmware, you could go that route. Or you could just uh, pick and choose more of the science, which is one of the things that I did. Of course, being robotics and building with Legos, you've got ready-made engineering and a lot of good math uh, integrated in there where kids don't even know they're, they're doing math. So for example, one of the first challenges uh, after kids learn how to build structures with the Legos that are, are stronger, they had to make a bridge across their Lego kit box that could hold a um, medium motor. And of course they got extra points for using the fewest amount of Lego pieces. So here are some different uh, ways that the kids built their bridges and all successfully completing their first challenge. One of the challenges after that uh, included these Lego parts to build this uh, gear shaft here. And they, they have a, a big gear, medium gear, and a small gear. And by rearranging this, they learn how gear ratios affect how many times this tire spun. So they turned this gear here, no matter which one was here, and counted how many rotations they got out of the tire for one rotation of the gear. Some great math there for ratios, and it helped them learn the basics. So when they built uh, their robots to solve challenges later on, they had a good, strong foundation to build on. Another activity that kids did before even uh, getting a robot was they had to build a device uh, which they called a golfing machine to hit a ball uh, while using sort of a remote control and it had no power other than the mechanical energy of their hands spinning the remote control. So what we see here in this video is this student is going to spin the remote and then the golf apparatus hits the ball and they had to hit a target a certain distance away. And what they learned there, the reason it's called the Faraday golfing machine, it's because it uses Faraday's principle of magnets and copper that when they uh, rotate a copper around a magnet, Faraday found that you generate electricity. So he, in, because of that, it led to the invention of the uh, electric motor and the generator as well. So this was a, a great activity uh, to start kids off on, on learning some science. Once students have a, a good foundation to build upon, uh, they have challenges that actually include using the what's called the EV3 brick, and that is the part that attaches to sensors and truly makes their Lego pieces into robots. So here's one challenge, the Sensabot challenge, and students have to program their robot to go to three lines, stop at each line, either lift, lift and drop uh, their arm there, and then turn around and go back into their starting point. Now this not only included engineering of building the, the robot device, it also included programming to get it to do what you just saw here. So this, this robotics curriculum uh, includes programming as well. 
And the LEGO Mindstorms uses uh, block style programming as in Scratch, so it's accessible to all students. Here's another uh, challenge that students did, and this team chose to have their robot uh, measure the temperature of water in two different cups. Now one cup had cold water, the other cup had uh, warm water, and what that robot is dropping into each cup is a temperature sensor. So these robots can also collect data for the students and they built it. So this is uh, like real science because real scientists have to program uh, their own methods of data collection. Well, these kids went beyond that. They built their own robot, attached their own sensors, and programmed it to do not just the data collection, but putting the sensor into each cup. Uh, it, it was a great project, and, and I enjoyed watching kids go through the process of building and programming. And if you have a team of two or three, uh, kids who are more into the programming can lead the way on that. Kids who are, are better builders or have more of an affinity to it can lead the way on that. So kids can work to their strengths. But of course, if you have enough computers, uh, like one for each kid, I did ask each kid to program so they could at least learn and be exposed to it. Like I said, it's block style programming, accessible to all kids, uh, because all they have to do is move blocks of code and not have to worry about typing it correctly or understanding any programming language. Another project we did in class which uh, aligned with an environmental stewardship project that I've been doing with sixth graders for years, it, it came from an actual first LEGO League challenge called the Hydrodynamics Challenge. That was the challenge for the 2018 uh, school year and it matched perfectly our environmental unit, so I had kids uh, do it. In that challenge, they had to design a, a way to clean up the environment. So what you're gonna see here is this is a robot that is supposed to be a boat robot that is cleaning up uh, floating plastic garbage in the water. So here's this one in action. And this robot has a sensor, so it would sense where the floating plastic garbage is and then using its arms uh, would collect this garbage and then be able to take it to a place where the garbage can be hopefully retrieved and, and recycled. Uh, so this was another great challenge which had kids problem solving, working in teams, uh, building, designing solutions, and uh, programming them to actually test it out. Now I was fortunate enough to have access to a 3D printer in my classroom and so part of our design challenges uh, included kids being able to design their own parts that they could uh, build on a program that comes with Windows 10 for free called 3D Builder and then we would send that to the 3D printer where they could uh, print them and try them out. So what was printing there uh, was this drill bit. Uh, the team found out they made it way larger than they had thought. So even when you're using a ruler and seeing how much 10 or, or 15 centimeters is on the ruler, uh, it looks like it didn't translate until it printed and they saw, wow, that, that really is much bigger than we had anticipated. So there's a great math lesson and, and it just cost a little bit of plastic and a few hours of printing. Totally worth it. Now this student uh, built this to use with their robot to make a cutting uh, machine. And this worked out perfectly. This was a great design that they built on 3D Builder. Now this team wanted to make a robot that actually wrote something. Um, so here they found that their first design uh, to hold a pencil, because they couldn't ha there were no Lego pieces that could actually hold a pencil, uh, this one didn't work. So they went back to the drawing board and they found that this design held a pencil quite well and testing it found that this one worked a lot better. They still had to get the pencil to hold more firmly, but once they got it, they were able to uh, draw an S on their paper. Now. Uh, 
robotics doesn't have to include $412 kits if you uh, get these wonderful, wonderfully fun robotic balls. They're called Sphero. This one is the Spark Plus, and it has an app that also uses block-style programming, making it very easy to uh, program. These are about $130. I think there's another Sphero brand that's uh, a bit cheaper. Um, but the nice thing about Sphero is they have an education website, edu.sphero.com. And I found this challenge for my 8th graders, the Chariot Challenge. You can use connects, or really, I also used uh, paper cups, uh, popsicle sticks, anything you can find. And their goal is to create a chariot where the Sphero robotic ball is the motor. And this goes through all the uh, instructions. It's, it's the activity that the teacher could use this if kids have computers or if they project it on their uh, board with a projector on their computer. Their kids don't even need computers. It's got videos uh, showing what the kids can do, giving them ideas just to get them started because really you want them building and, and designing. And this is uh, race day after my eighth graders built their Sphero chariots. And what we did, we, we actually did a tournament style where uh, I randomly picked two teams uh, and, and paired them up and each winner got to go to the next round. And yeah, these are fully programmed. This is not being remote controlled because you see the kids following them with iPads and you might think, oh, they're remote controlling them. No, no, they had to program them uh, to go around the course. And no matter how well they programmed them, if they got turned off course, that could be the end of the race. So you can see very different designs. Uh, there's one that just used plastic cups, while the other one used connects. Of course, the plastic cup one didn't do very well. Well, that one is a speedster. But then again, not getting the programming right will cause it to go off course and forfeit the race. And they actually went through a lot of testing. So this was race day after giving them plenty of chances to, to get their robot to go around the room because the ball there is what they're programming. Everything around the ball is, is only allows it to move easier and they have to carry their payload. So this was a really good race because they were both off to a great start. And you can see the excitement in the classroom. Uh, and, and it just took one period to do the races, but all the buildup to it led to this excitement. And there was our grand champion. Um, so these are just some examples. There, I mean, there's so many ways you could do this, but by adding robotics, you include programming, which computer science is, is very helpful and important, especially if kids want to be scientists. Uh, in order to be a scientist, you have to have programming skills, especially if you want to get a PhD. Um, but there's math involved. The kids don't even realize they're doing math. Because in schools, we tend to think of math as mostly computation. Uh, and, and of course, the engineering, there's a lot of building going on, more than I ever did in my regular science class. Engineering was the part of STEM that was the one that seemed more like an add-on than an integral part. Whereas with robotics, it's just an integral part of it. There's no question. Why are we building? Because we're trying to solve this challenge. And in order to do it, we have to design and build. So there's some ideas if you want to use a Sphero or Lego Mindstorms EV3.